Hey guys, my name is Hayden and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a React app that you can use as a template for any website. By the end of the video, you'll have your very own website built with React that you can use to start building your project. So if you checked out my last video, I explained what app we would be building. There'll be a link in the description if you haven't seen that or around here but this video is just about building the foundation of that app so I can expand the idea from there and also that you guys can use that to expand your idea from there. So what I want to quickly cover before we start this video is why you would use React. If you don't care about that there'll be a timestamp in the description or here that you can skip to so that you can just get straight into building the website. So why would you use React? React is a open source framework that was first developed by Facebook. It's extremely popular and lots of people are using it, lots of companies are using it in order to build their front ends. One of the reasons why I personally really like React is because it has a component based architecture to it. So as a back end engineer myself, I'm very used to kind of object oriented type of programming and React kind of follows that trend with this component based architecture. So for example, you can have a React component that could be a button and then you can reuse that component throughout your website. So you build the button once and then you can reuse it very similar to having an object that you can pass around and use. React also has inbuilt state per component. So this means that you can connect some internal state to each component. So for example, the state of a component could be the color of a component. So think of a button. So when I click on that button, what I want is that the color of it changes, for example, from red to green. And I use that using state. So each component has internal state. I click on that button, that fires off a state change. And that state change changes the, the variable color, for example. So then that component is re-rendered onto the screen for the user to see, and it's now changed from from red to green. That's a use case of using state and that is built into every React component and part of the framework, which is awesome. React also optimizes how it updates information that the user sees on the screen. So obviously, like I said earlier, with all these button color changes, you know, changing from red to green, like take a trader screen, for example, with lots of numbers and colors flashing all the time. There's an inefficient solution for updating the DOM, which is what the actual web browser displays, the document object model. If there's an inefficient solution for that, your app's gonna feel slow and sluggish. So what React does is optimizes those re-renders that are sent to the screen using something called the virtual DOM, which is probably a little bit too deep for this kind of introduction tutorial, but just to give you a heads up, you know, people at Facebook and the people that maintain the React code base think about this stuff. And that's kind of one of the bigger selling points of React is that it's fast and snappy. Hopefully that gives you a decent overview of why you would use React and why it is so popular. Let me know in the comments below if you've used React before, I'd be interested to know what projects and why you've used it. If you don't like React, I'd also be interested to know, it'll be good to get a little discussion going down there. Right, now we know what React is, let's jump over to the computer and let's set up the React website. Right, so first things first, you are gonna need something called Node in order to run a React app. So you just need to navigate to node.js.org slash downloads. The link will be in the description, so do not worry about copying that from up there. One note here is that in order to run a React app, you need to have version 8.10 or higher. That at the time of recording this video, the version is 12.16. So unless you can travel back in time, you should be pretty safe to just carry on and follow this tutorial. So you want the latest and you either need to pick the Windows installer like Mac OS or source code, depending on how you want to install. I'm on a Windows machine, so I'm going to click a Windows installer. This will pop this up down here. And once it's downloaded, you can just click on it and this will start the install wizard. So open it up and uh, it will go through and just check your computer and you just want to follow this wizard through and say next, 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 install into your computer. And when it's done, you can just press the install button and we'll let this finish and that will be node installed for you. So as you can see, node has finished installing and we can just click the finish button now and that's all done. So to ensure that Node has installed correctly, we can check in a command prompt. So if you don't know what a command prompt is, just press the Windows key, type typing CMD and then command prompt. This should pop up. I'm just gonna make this slightly bigger so you guys can see. And we just need to check the version of Node that has been installed. So if we just type Node minus V and press enter, you can see version 12.16.3 which is exactly the same as this version here. Yours might be different depending on what time you watch this video and when Node release new versions. But if that's the case, happy days.
Cool, so once we have got the Node version installed, there is something that comes with Node called MPX. Um, as you can see, we've got version 6.13.1 and MPX comes with a package called Create React App. So Create React App is a helpful little tool that just builds a kind of a default template React App for everybody to use. So what I'm gonna do is change to my desktop. Uh, this is where I want my new React App to be. Hey guys, just a small post edit here. I forgot one important part of the tutorial, which was you need to install Create React App. And in order to do that, you just need to run npm install globally create react app. Let that run and that is all. There you go, perfect, done. Um, and I'm just gonna type npx create react app and the name of the project I want. So I'm gonna call this my first react app press enter and this will go off and resolve and fetch all the relative stuff that it needs in order to create the react app so this might take a while so we'll just skip to the end okay so now this has been installed what i'm going to do is open up the code or the newly created react app in vs code because it's a lot easier to see so let's jump over to that Okay, so I just realized I explained everything to you guys and then forgot to press the record button. So I'm gonna have to do it all over again. So um, as you can see, we've opened the project up in VS Code here and we've got a couple files in our um, project. So I'm just gonna go through top to bottom and explain what these files are. So you've got node modules, which is where all your dependency code goes. So if your app requires code from another dependency, that's where it will live. Public is things like your fave icon. So this is the icon that appears at the top of the web browser when you see it in a tab, for example, in Google Chrome, logos and another kind of configuration files for, for your app. Don't worry too much about them at the minute. Source is probably the thing that you need to care most about. That's where all your source code goes. So if I open up index.js, this is where our entry point into our app is. And these are the files we're all gonna have to change. And if you want to make features into your app and you know change colors and make it look all nice. So the source folder is probably your most important folder. That's where all your code files are gonna go and your CSS files are gonna go. Then below that, we have a git ignore file, which is if you put your project on GitHub, it will tell them what folders to ignore. So you don't, for example, put the entirety of everything onto GitHub. You just do the, the files that you need. I'll be making a video about that after this one. So, or, and I will also link it in the description below. So don't worry. Under that, you've got package.json. This just says what dependencies does this package need? So you can see these are all my dependencies for this project here. And it also explains how you can run the app, build, run tests, and all sorts of stuff. Again, don't really worry too much about this at the minute. Your main focus is just gonna be on that source file. Readme just gives you documentation about the React app and kind of the stuff we saw on the terminal earlier. And yarn lock is very similar to a kind of a package.json. So there we go. So you're gonna be spending most 99.9% .9 of your time under in this source folder. Cool. So now you're gonna to want to run this on localhost and I will explain more about localhost next. So what I've got here is VS Code and I've got a web browser here. So you're probably thinking to yourself, brilliant, I've got my React app now, um, let me see it in a web browser or online because I want to see what it looks like. Now, you can't do that because obviously it's not hosted anywhere at the minute, but what you can do is run your app on localhost. So basically localhost is just a location on your computer, which if we type in a specific address into a web browser, it will point to that. Okay, so currently all React apps, when they run, run on localhost 3000. And you can see that if you go to the readme file and here, so you can see HTTP localhost 3000. Now, if I take that, and go into my web browser, paste it in and press enter, you can see nothing happens because our app is not running yet. So you can see, look, this site can't be reached. So our web browser is trying to hit that address, but there's nothing on that address. So it's not having much luck, okay? So what we need to do is run the app. And what I'm gonna do actually is just go back into that readme. So you can see here, we can press say yarn start. So it says runs, runs the app in development mode and then here it says open localhost blah 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 to view it in the browser so we basically just need to do this yarn start and it will run our app on localhost and then we can see it in the browser so what i'm going to do is come up here and press terminal say new terminal and this should pop up one down here 
And all I'm gonna do is say yarn start, which is that command that I've taken from here that says runs the app in development mode. When I press enter, you can see it's gonna go off and do some stuff. In fact, my web browser's just reacted because it sees that, right, something's gone on. And there we go, you can see we are running on localhost port 3000. And if I come over here, it says, look, here is our React app, localhost port 3000. So there we go, we've got it set it up and running. That is pretty much the bare bones of setting up a React app. You've got the code, you've got it running on localhost. Now you can go through to your heart's content and changing it and making it look good. So what I do just want to touch on as well is a really cool feature in React where you can actually make live code changes. So what I'm going to do is come into index.js and you can see this imports some react.strict mode and something called app. And you can see app comes from dot slash app. So that if we dive into dot slash app, which is basically just saying, right, look for a file called app in this current directory, which is just this file here. And as you can see, I'm just gonna close that down so that we can see better. And as you can see, this is very similar to what we're seeing on the screen here. In fact, you can see, look, edit source code app.js and press save to, re to reload. So what I'm gonna do is just change this to, for example, uh, let's change this to software engineer Hayden. So nothing's happened yet. So it doesn't reload the website until I press the save button. So what I'm gonna do is press control save and you can see, there we go, look, Software Engineer Hayden has been changed. And this is a really cool feature, it's called Hot Reload in React. So you can type code and you can instantly see it reflected if you're running it on localhost. So that's, for example, in like a HTML or JSX React file. And you can also do it in CSS as well. So for example, if we come down here and say, what could we change? The background color. So let's change that to uh, hot pink because that is my favorite CSS color, and press save. You can now see that it's changed the CSS as well. It's just awesome. You can just basically type code, change it, and see it reflected instantly. And what's not to like there? So yeah, they, that is pretty much the bread and butter of setting up a React app. Perfect, there we go. So you've installed Node, you've set up a React app, and you've made some live code changes and seen them reflected instantly on localhost. So that is it. You're pretty much ready to go with your React app. So you can now delete all that code in app.js and start building your own website. That's pretty much what I'm gonna do for my project. I'd love to see what you're building. So please comment below or you know, share me the GitHub link. I'd love to see what's going on with you guys. If this was a useful tutorial, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, or more tutorials of stuff like this. As I go throughout this project, I'm gonna be pushing out kind of tutorials and little um, how to's of how I'm doing stuff with this apps. If that would interest you, obviously, you know, sign up. Hope you have a great day and enjoy your new React app. See you later, everyone.